Sharonda Williams pay your weight. Hi, how are both of you doing today? Hi, Sharonda. How are you? Nice background. That's awesome. <laughs> Look, I'm in the movie with you guys as well. I was, <laughs> I was there with you in spirit. Um, but one of the things that really stood with me um, after watching this film is about how it's never too late to do what makes you happy. And I want to ask the both of you, and you can speak either personally or professionally, what do you do to make sure that you're seizing like the opportunities and um, just the joy of doing what makes you happy to be here, regardless of what society has to say? And Shailene, we can start with you. Whew, God, theme of life. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I think that it's really, when you're somebody who's empathetic or a people pleaser, I think it's really easy to put your own needs and joy aside sometimes in order to make sure that the, you know, the group or the people you're around stay happy in their lives. Um, and I think that we have this idea of like chasing happiness when in reality, it's really easy to be happy when you follow your instincts and when you listen to like what your own like inner heart says, but we're kind of trained not to do that. And so I, I feel like I'm always in pursuit of, of trying to get back to my instincts when I stray from them, because joy is not hard to come by when, when you're living in your like authentic truth, but it's very difficult to do that. <laughs> uh, well, well, for me, this, this completely the same, you know, I guess living on the edge in, in whatever way that, that, that manifests. Um, I've got a nice little saying that I love and it's work hard, play hard, rest hard. So whatever you're doing, fully commit to it and, and, and enjoy it because you've got that moment. So enjoy that moment as it will go. Look, you better tell people that they need to rest because I don't, people don't understand. I truly believe in self-care and making sure that you're relaxing yourself. So Important, huh? Totally. <laughs> Actually, Callum, help me with that. I feel like you're really good at self-care, Caltern. Really? I hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. Work rest up there. But, you know, I also want to ask you, it's interesting because we're looking at romance in two different time periods. And it made me feel like I want someone to write me a love letter. Like, I deserve a handwritten love letter. And I want to oh. ask you, do you feel like um technology do you feel like that because we use technology so much do you think that's changed the um how we perceive romance and how we see it in our lives i think so i mean if you look at statistics teenagers are having less sex now than they ever have throughout like the history of i guess charting when teenagers are intimate with one another and i think it's because like we were afraid of intimacy um in in the physical because everything over the phone is so uh heightened and it's so exaggerated for what real life actually is and so i think when you have two people who are just in a room breathing the same air with one another there's a false sense of not feeling content or not feeling at peace because on the phone everything is an other than instead of just being like completely present in the in, in the moment I agree. I also think it would be interesting to ask that question to someone who's like 16, 17, 18, because we're from the generation that had both. You know, we yeah. were just when the internet came and, uh, and, and getting to grasp with it, and they're the generation that, that, it, that just is. So it'd be interesting to ask someone that question. I don't know the answer. Now I'm going to go find my nephew and ask him. He's not going to give me a straight answer, though. Yeah, he's going to be like, I'm fine. <laughs> But Shailene, I have a question for you because I find it it's so interesting because we always talk about as women how things were so different, you know, years ago. And I love that we have these two perceptions of what it was like in the 60s to present day. And I want to ask you, what is it about the generational differences that has changed for women? But in a way, it feels as though we progress, but we still find a lot of these stories where women feel trapped where they don't necessarily have the agency to be happy. I think it takes, I mean, it, there's a lot of like generational trauma too that everybody's working through, you know? And I think that that as much as women are taught to be a certain way, men are taught to be a certain way too. You know, men are taught to not necessarily access their emotions or their feelings. There's like a lot of societal standards that held hold men at certain in certain ways and hold women in certain ways and what we're all missing is just being authentic in our emotions but women don't feel safe to do that because that could mean a lot of negative consequences and men don't know how to do that because they've never been taught or allowed to be to do that most i mean this is like you know societally speaking and so although we have made great progress that fear of connection and that fear of living out our truth i think still exists and still pertains at least in this country in the united states because we haven't crossed 
through the boundaries of vulnerability yet. We haven't like access like true emotional freedom that that transcends even gender that's like recognizing masculine and feminine qualities so that we all can feel safe with one another. Look, you better give us an entire word. I could do a whole therapy session off of this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I appreciate the both of you so much. Thank you for taking the time to speak to me. Thanks for asking great questions. Very sure, Love you to meet you. Great to meet you. Bye.